I'm like, it's summer. I'm, not, I'm on vacation. <laughs> I know. I keep seeing all the videos uh, going down the river. Oh, it's that was so freaking fun. I had never done that before. And you did river rat? Yeah. Yes. Uh, a group of people we play volleyball with will go out there, just adults, and just float down with some adult beverages and just have fun. So yeah. it's it's not just for kids. It's for everyone. And then there's a new one in the Smokies. I haven't done yet. It's um. So if you're going the back way into Pittman Center, they just built one. And I want to try that out because – I think it's a fun time during the summer. It's way too hot to be a Dollywood. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't even do Dollywood. We did go into the Greenbrier entrance of the park. Yeah. And there's like a big, like we found a legit swimming hole, like a, like a true local swimming hole. It was so cool. It was awesome. I'll have to look at that one. Cause we, when my nephew came up, we, I mean, I didn't swim cause I was too big, but like he was climbing up all the waterfalls and stuff for the back way into Cosby in the national park. And there was not a soul there. Yeah. Yeah, and so I might have done a federal crime, but I was like, hey, let's carve our names in a tree right here yeah. to remember this. So this is I don't know if that's illegal or not, but it, it's uh, it was peaceful. There was no one there. Anybody listening to this, don't do that. But you have to after you go to Knife Works. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he's addicted to knives, so I bought Where's him a knife. Where's my knife I got? I should show it to you. I, don't, I like unpacked and already put stuff away and lost stuff. I'm like, where's where's this thing at? I mean? let him pick anything he wanted and he picked a samurai sword. And oh. then my two nephews, we got pictures with them on the, uh, you know, the big old uh, uh, Game of Thrones chair of swords. Yeah. Yeah. So, we were doing that for a while. People were watching. They were like, what are they doing? But what's crazy is I was trying to convince my nephew to get the blow gun. Like what kid yeah. doesn't want the blow dart gun? It's like what they do like in third world countries with the blow dart and you like hit stuff. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, I don't want that. I want a sword. All right. They have everything there. They even have like Arnold Schwarzenegger cut off vest thing from one of the yep. Terminator movies. And I'm like, he didn't, he was big then. That's tiny. And then you go to the bottom and you're like, oh, there's all these rocks and fossils yeah. and all that stuff. I'm like, I had to walk out because I was about to buy another gun. I have a thousand, like maybe a thousand or more pounds of rough like rocks and gems in a storage unit in Ware's Valley. I'm like, don't let me buy anything down here. <laughs> you should get one of those uh as a kid i had a tumbler you can shine them up shine the yes, stones up i have and... one i fucking ran oh just said the f word I ran that thing until it gave out yeah you can make a little little friendship necklaces to all your clients from the heart just hire someone and say hey all my clients here you go being part of my group here's a gift from the heart i pay someone five bucks an hour to make these <laughs> you need a closing gift i got one for you $3.99 lipstick knife from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. <laughs> the one I bought is sick, and I actually didn't buy it from Knife Works. I walked across the street to the hardware store just because I was bored, and I found one that was really cool looking, and it was BA, since I can't curse on here. And uh, I paid well, $8 I guess bucks we for can. It. It's just my YouTube. Nah, <laughs> 8 bucks for it, and I was like, yes, this knife is awesome. And, and I finally got to use it this morning because I couldn't open a um, protein shake pack. So I finally got to use my knife. I'm like, yes, I paid eight bucks just to open this package. Oh, my goodness. I'm excited. I, I look so cool with that knife in my pocket. Don't forget when you go to the airport. I uh, know. I'm more worried about my ankle sending it off with the plate in there. Oh, my goodness. You're crazy. Well, I, I wanted to just jump on here. I had a couple of topics and I was getting ready to do like a market update call because things are starting to change a little bit. And then I saw your all's new, I don't know, is it loosened lending requirements? I'm like, let's talk about what's going on at the lender. So excellent question. So you see a lot of negativity out there and a lot of people are saying credits tightening and all this stuff. And you are seeing that in the commercial world, um, maybe on government loans, but when it comes to non-QM, it's a different beast. And so we just released a product that's geared for investors. We had it a while ago and we brought it back. It's called the Noni Plus. Actually, it was never a plus before. It was just the DSCR. But now for those seasoned investors, investors that are experienced, investors that have great reserves, investors that are buying great properties, right? 1.25 debt service ratio or better. Uh, we've got the product for you, right? It's better pricing. It's the Noni Plus. Um, there's two things I think people miss on this that I love. Um, number one thing that I love, and I have yet to find anyone that does this. Well, actually, both of these is you can go up to 20 acres. 
right? Oh. Most DSER loans are two acres, but you know, in the Southeast, let's be honest, most of these cabins are coming with acreage and it's been hard finding financing. And I've always had to do creative financing to, to get those deals to work, mm -hmm. but now you can go up to 20 acres and that's great for customers. Cause you might want to build a tiny cabin on there or whatever down the road, but right. you can still buy a cabin with land. Uh, people overlook that on the Noni plus. And then my biggest, I'd put that as number two, number one, 6% seller concession, right? So on investment, most people are at 2%. People might say, why is that important? It's whatever. It, it's a huge deal because you can buy your rate down. You can buy prepayment penalty out. You can um, pay all your closing costs, and increase your cash on cash. Because on average, investors hold on to properties five to six years and they, they cash out refi to invest in another property. So if you can pay all your closing costs up front, that's going to increase your cash savings for the next five years. And then you can refi and pay the fees for the first time. Most investment loans only allow up to 2%. Conventional and other DSCR lenders too, maybe some DSCR three, but to allow 6%, that's unheard of. So that's the strategy that people are going with. I'm closing the first Noni Plus that I think we've seen because we just released it. Um, switched the client that was a regular DSCR. It's better pricing. So mm -hmm. after underwriting, I quickly switched him to get a better pricing. Um, and we're closing on it tomorrow. So it does have a little lower interest rate, but he also was getting, you know, 4% seller concession. That's huge. And people are going to ask. Who's doing seller concession? I don't think I've done a deal in the last couple of months that doesn't have seller concession. Right. Yeah. So to summarize, 15% down, up to 20 acres, and you know, working with your agent, hopefully you're working with me or Penny at Invest in the Smoky Mountains, to ask for those seller concessions in your offer. So like up to 6% of the purchase price back from the seller as like a credit to closing. Is that the best way to structure that or? Yeah. So when you get the 6%, I had someone ask this the other day, it's not just guaranteed buy your rate down is the best deal. What, once you get that 6%, we're going to look at some scenarios and say, hey, with your goals, is it better? Because I believe I'm going to refine three years. I'm going to tell you, don't waste that 6% buying the rate down pay all your fees, closing costs. Okay. If you say, Hey, I'm holding on to this for seven to 10 years because I don't believe rates will come down in the next seven to 10 years. Then it's more beneficial to buy your rate down because of the length that you're holding the property for savings. So if you can get the seller concession, then you, or I'm treating you as the client, but you, your realtor, and I will sit down and decide what's the best strategy. If you believe that there's going to be rapid appreciation, you know, let, let's take your cabin, for example, the, the um, Dolly Parton. Yeah. Right. I'm sure after that remodel, that added a lot of value. So oh, if yeah. your goal is to refi in a year or two, then let's get the seller concession to buy out the prepayment penalty, treat it as a bridge loan. That way you're not really worried about prepayment penalty or a lot of your closing costs. Take the higher rate right now, treat it as a bridge loan. And then when you have your uh, remodel completed and when rates come down just a little bit, refi. So it's all about strategy and 6%, that gives you a lot of options. So 15% um, down, it's condos, non-warrantable condos, single family homes, multi-units. We can't do it on condo tells, um, but so long Cabins. as- Cabins, yes. And, and I know they're single family let's homes. Clarify. Like, let's be clear. Well, <laughs> it's not. Let's be clear. A lot of DSCR lenders, if it's labeled a cabin, they will not touch it because they don't understand the definition of a cabin in the Smokies right. versus a true cabin. These, so these cabins are nicer than my house. <laughs> oh, 100 percent But when an appraiser deems it as a cabin, lenders that aren't local, they uh, I won't mention their names, but they think they're the ones that are chinking and there's no there's no insulation and all that stuff. And, and lenders don't want to touch that because they're unique properties. We'll touch them. We'll close yeah. them. But at the end of the day, I just call the appraiser up and go, Hey man, this isn't a real cabin, right? This is built two years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's got like insulation me. and it's gorgeous. I mean, per square foot is more than I make, you know, in like two years or whatever. Cause these cabins are gorgeous. Let's be honest. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have some with the chinking and then I do have some that are, to your point, wood siding, wood, you know, they look and feel like a cabin, but really it's a single family home. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. and what's crazy is the chinking, you know, I, my property that I, I 
fixed up recently. We chinked it, and I feel racist whenever I say that. But uh, perma chinking was great. The chinking is not as hard as I thought, and like if you have cracked wood or anything, it's an easy fix. So I, just changing the chinking on my cabin has made it look brand new. And so it blew my mind because I bought a, uh, I'll say it, I think I bought a turd and it's not a diamond yet, but it's not a turd anymore because I've done little stuff to the outside and the inside. So in your point, like if I did the Noni plus on this, um, you know, I would treat it as a bridge loan and I'm about to be done with it. I'll refi because even with Noni plus means you can go, I believe it's 20%. Say what this acronym down. is that you've given for anybody that doesn't know. Which acronym? What is it? Non-owner. Oh, non-owner, no income. Non so Noni is our. It's not your grandmother, y'all. It's not, even though it's got a grandma on it, it. I don't know marketing. I'm not a marketing person, but uh, Noni is our DSCR loan. So when you hear us say Noni, it's our term for DSCR. But ultimately, DSCR, DSCR plus. Um, it's a great program for investors and. I was listening to a podcast this morning and the guy said that DSCR is now all the rave for everyone. Didn't know that. I couldn't tell. Cause all that's what? the rave. What the cool kids say, oh. like it's the coolest thing. Well, and I mean, you're, you want seasoned investors that have reserves and stuff, but a lot of people don't realize they can qualify for that, even though they don't have like a massive portfolio, like you or I do, like, you know, you've done a deal. You can qualify, right? Like it's right. Yeah. So, can, you can do a strategy call, you know, you do these calls for free all the time and go through like, you know, make sure that somebody's a good candidate. If you've never owned real estate, it's probably not the product for you. Oh, a hundred percent. Plus yeah. you're going to be scared of it because it's got a original well, cost. Which yeah, you you're also gonna... do, you're also doing conventional deals. So it's like, you're yes. kind of a one-stop shop for somebody that's curious about, you know, you've got a down payment. So what is it? What can you do with this down payment? Like big Nate's the guy. Big Nate. Oh, why? Did you put my name as Big Nate or did I do that? I did not do that. Like, wow. It's called Big Nate. Cool for school. Last time I was on a call, it was Steven. And I have no idea why I was called Steven. So uh, people got confused why I'm talking on behalf of Steven. And then time before that, I was April because I was logged in. April had to log in oh. on my computer to teach a class. And I guess I never changed it. So I was teaching a, a mastermind and everyone kept saying, is your name Nathan or April? Like I clearly yeah, look like an April. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm in the spring can be known as April. How about that? Hey, you switched to the cabin lady. I always thought it was show me the money. Oh, I know. So that's my corporate name. Apparently Airbnb queen is how I refer people to you. Oh goodness. But, but we're dominating the direct book space right now. That Dolly cabin, which by the way, is not a cabin. It's just a house in Pigeon Forge on flat land near Walton's Creek. So yes, it's in a flood zone. I do have a flood policy on it. So if you need recommendations on flood insurance, please call me. Um, but it's just a house. But how close but are you? How close are you to the water? TikTok. We're how not close, that close. Close You're enough not? to be in the floodplain. Okay. Cause it's uh they passed something not too long ago where you can't build like those, those cabins, like the famous Gatlinburg cabins that are on the Creek. So yeah. now people that are selling them are charging a premium because they're like, Hey, you can't build anymore where you can fish off the deck in your backyard. But um, flood zones are great. If, I mean, as a kid, I would love the flood zone, go out there and play. It's like having a pool. Yeah. So I was, try, I was, was not trying to go down the rabbit hole of flood zone, but to your point, I would love to get one of those cabins on the little river in Townsend. Oh, that'd be so Just cool. because you fell in love with tubing down the river? Yeah. So there's one you, with a tree through it right now. And I'm like, that could be a fire cell pretty quickly here. Did you see the one with the goats on top? Oh, no. Yeah. So if you're going down, I think it's halfway through on your right. There's one with goats. And it's on the roof and everything. And then I think it's right after you do the rock. Did you guys find the rock with the yeah. steps? So we spend time hanging out there. I, I think it's right after. Went, so I just stayed in the tube. I always end up when I stand up after floating for so long because it's cold water. It feels great. I always end up getting cramps in my calves. I'm like, oh, man, I've been laying lazy all, all the way down this lazy river. So, but that place is phenomenal. They've got pizza, they've got food, they got food trucks. Uh, River Rat is a must go to place, all ages. For sure. For sure. And then that Tukalichi Caverns, 
I'm like, there's um, cabins for sale right near this cave. How come nobody's jumping on this? Like, although I, it's your budget can dictate Pigeon Forge, Sevierville, Gatlinburg, buy over there first. But Townsend is a close second for me. Townsend is, especially, there, but. especially with the airport. You saw the airport just released. What is it in the next two years? I have it somewhere. They're opening like 20 more gates. So wow. with more traffic coming in, Townsend's going to be a hotter spot. Is, yeah. Though. And it's between the Smokies and the airport. So you fly in. Stay at Townsend, go on the river, take your 20 minutes the back way into the Smokies and have fun and then get mm -hmm. out of the busy smokiness. Totally. I want to get your opinion on something too. Um, so we are seeing some, you know, we have limited inventory just like everywhere in the nation, but we are seeing some inventory sitting. We're seeing a little bit of price drops start to take place. What are your thoughts on possible burrs coming up? Are these opportunities to flip and hold coming up or is this market still not really dictating that? I feel like, and I'll give you my why of why I'm saying this, but it's like somebody wants to sell their cabin. They have a price in mind. They're making rental income. They've maybe owned it for 10 plus years. A lot of these older owners that have been invested a long time, they have their price. They're not going to budge off their price, but their cabin needs work. It's not super turnkey. Are we going to start to see this burr opportunity? And then if we are, what do you recommend as far as lending options in that regard? So I'm trying to think how to put this. Like, I don't think it's burr has stopped, right? Burr has yeah. been great over the last few years. I think it's great. I see properties up there coming on the market. Uh, there's one, it's an A-frame. I, I literally, you've met Emma and Henry. I was talking to Henry the other day. I called him in a panic because I was like, dude, do you remember this cabin? And then I called the realtor that looked at it. I'm like, do you remember this cabin? This thing looks like a million dollar cabin now. I don't know what they bought it for because I'm scared to look because it's going to make me sad because it's probably so cheap. Right. But it it literally was for sale for, I think, 200. I guarantee you someone bought it for 125 and it's now selling for 600. Do I think it will sell for 600? No, but it's wishful selling. They'll probably get 500 for it. I think they're going to make a pretty penny off it and it's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, I, I've done the Burr method. I've got clients that do the Burr method. If you do it correctly, I think it's great. I even have clients right now that are buying um, struggling portfolios or struggling cabins mm -hmm. and doing like a mini burr where all they do is come in and, and basically touch it up, yeah. touch it up, do the furniture, do the photos, right? That's key is if you don't have an STR expert, property manager, get the pictures right. And then their goal is at the end of the year, once they pump up all the income, then to sell it for a profit. So yeah. I think burr is very it's been big. It's been quiet because of the amount of new builds, mm -hmm. but I think it's a great way to get instant equity or forced appreciation. Um, I did it. It's a lot yeah. more work than I thought. So make sure you have a contractor that you trust. Um, but I think it's going to be, it's for the people that don't want to spend that much money. It's a great option because yeah. you don't have to fix it up to the extreme yet. Yeah. Plus you have basically a blank canvas, right? Like your dolly. There's maybe one of, a burr. Yeah. I but mean, there's, there's nothing around like it, right? You have to set yourself apart when you're looking at a lot of cabins up there. It's the same old, same old, but if you burr and you hold, you get to have a blank canvas and build it. And I'm not going to lie. I did tell someone your cabin to use as a, uh, as almost like a blueprint. Cause they're like, how do I stand out with a condo? I said, Hey, you should, let's go. I, I said, you should call the queen of Airbnbs, stare at what she's just done. And look at this. If nothing else in that condo unit is like this, you're going to stand out, which in this market, you need to stand out. So yeah, I think you're seeing a lot of it. Now I will tell you, you have seen some backfire, right? There's a couple I know that were burrs. People had bought a property, fixed it up, spent a lot of money, went really cheap in some areas. And you can just tell in the photos, and it's been for sale. They tried to sell it last year. They're trying to sell it again this year. They're not selling it, right? There's things they're missing out on. So you got to be up to date with what people want. I had a property manager tell me the other day that they personally believe game rooms are not a hot, hot thing anymore because every kid can just Thank play video you. games, hmm. right? Like if you don't bring other friends, you're not going to play with your siblings. So there's like video games are bigger. So why are people spending, you know, a hundred grand on a game room or 50 grand, make it 
a little more simple or do the electronic. I might disagree with them, but they said that's what they're seeing from people with reviews. Um, as far as lending goes with Burr, I guess one of the topics that not many people talk about is private money. I love private money. Private money is fix and flip loans. Private money are bridge loans. We have a bridge loan. You put 25% down. It appraises. Uh, it's livable, right? Not condemned. 25% uh, down. Boom. There you go. It's a 12-month interest only and then no prepayment penalty. And so your goal is whether you're done in three months or you're done in nine months, refinance into a long-term loan. And then you've got yeah. fix and flip loans, which are usually three, six, nine, 12 months, sometimes two years. Uh, what fix and flip loans do is they look at the ARV, right? Once again, ARV, uh, after repair value, since not a lot of people know what that means. So if you're buying a cabin and it's after repair value is, let's say, a million and you're purchasing it for 500, they'll give you 75% of the total deal. So that means they're giving you up to 75%, 750. So that's the purchase price and repairs because the ARV is a million dollars. Right. Fix and flip loans are great. Bridge loans are great, but you always need to have an exit strategy because if you cannot meet the deadline of six months or a year, you either have to pay 1% of the loan to extend it or you got to refi out of it. Right. So, and when you refinance out of it, you can always do the traditional conventional, uh, even though now they have a longer refi term or excuse me, seasoning period, uh, non-QM DSCR, Technically, rate term, there's no wait. So if you're done in a month, you can rate term right away uh, with the ARV, or you can do a cash out refi at six months. And I'm seeing a lot of private money is six months term. Six months is like the soonest. <clears throat> for cash out, yes. But if you're trying yeah. to, with the new ARV, but if you're doing like, hey, you know, I bought it for 250, I put a hundred grand cash into it. I only want to get all my money back and use the ARV. That's considered a rate term. Right. Because you're not getting more cash than you have in the project. That is no seasoning period. So you are seeing a lot of things up there that are burrs. And the one thing that I've noticed over the last couple of months talking to agents, make sure you do your due diligence before you buy a property to burr and you know it can be a short term rental. There's one on the market right now that was sold. Apparently, it can't be a short term rental, a real estate company that says they are, uh, you know, this is their bread and butter that they do. They they were a part of it. It's caused a huge ordeal up there. The flipper that flipped it is now struggling to sell it. Um, it seems like it's been for sale a couple different realtors. And every time it goes on the market, I get texts from other realtors like, hey, this is never going to sell because they're told it can't be an STR. So do your due diligence and make sure that if you're going to sell it as an STR, you can do it there. Because this one cabin I thought was gorgeous. And then when the realtor, I ran the numbers for him, he went to make an offer on it, found out from the neighbor, you can't do STRs there. So make sure you always trust your your agent, like the cabin lady. Uh, don't always just go out there and ask, hey, who's the best realtor? Best realtor, in my opinion, doesn't mean I sell the most. Best right. realtor is everything else other than, hey, everybody funnels their business up to me. I claim I do 100 deals a year. That doesn't mean you're the best. That means they're very busy. Let's be Or honest. that means they pay a lot of money in marketing and for other people to do their jobs. So uh, look for quality, not quantity, especially with agents with STRs. Yeah. I only got my agent license so I could have access to the data because I'm buying and selling all the time. Literally, period. That was it. And then all my friends from LA, I did my master's there at University of Southern California. They were like, help me buy a cabin. Help me do what you're doing. Manage it for me. So then... And now I have these businesses. Am I going to become rich through these businesses? No. Am I going to become wealthy through real estate? Yes. Check the box on that. So yeah, it's you know, uh, people we work with. We're picky about taking listings on. You know, we want to work with people that get it. We're really focused on hospitality. So yeah, yeah, that's definitely that's a good point. Yeah, because uh, should we? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, realtors that will tell you the truth. Especially if you say, hey, I want a million dollars and a realtor's telling you, hey, comps are only 750. 
don't take a realtor that says, let's go for a million because then it's going to sit there forever. I'd rather have a realtor tell me, Hey, this is not worth it. Here's why. If you want to sell it, let's sell it for 750 and hope we get 800. I'd rather find an agent that's truthful with that than right now. It's just seen, which is to your point that you brought up with about the market. We are seeing a lot more properties stay on the market longer. Yeah, I think it has to do a lot with wishful sellers, but oh, also yeah. wishful agents, right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. What else should we talk about? I mean, I think the only other thing I had bulleted was like, if you're on the fence of getting invested in the market, now's the time to start the conversations, especially if you're sitting on money that is giving you no return. We have a weekly email we send out on Mondays with deals we've underwritten that cash flow with full service property management. There are still deals. Are they 60% cash on cash like my early deals? No. Um, but it's definitely the time. I mean, I will say too, like I was talking to a buyer just last night and I'm like, if you've never done short-term rentals, now's the time to get in because people that were doing it for the last three or four years, they're kind of like, you can't teach an old dog, new tricks, yep. I.e., higher interest rates, higher purchase prices. So they're dropping out. They're looking at other investment vehicles. So there is opportunity if you do it right and you work with the right people. Oh, a hundred percent. I think. I want to say Barry Habib said this the other day on a podcast, investors that focus on rate will never get wealth because rate scares people out of real estate. So rate does matter, but at the end of the day, you can still find a deal. I had a client yesterday call all excited about the Noni Plus with 20% down. His debt service ratio is 1.52. And he just didn't believe me. He said, no one can do that at an interest rate like this. I said, absolutely you can, right? It's all about the projections. It's all about you know, are you going to get that rent? But then that's where the seller concession comes in because you talked about cash on cash, right? What's the equation, right? You have a numerator number divided by a denominator. The denominator is what people forget about, which is your total cash invested in the property. But if you get 6% to pay all your closing costs, that denominator got smaller Hmm. and that increases your cash on cash. I would bet to say in most cases, it would increase your cash on cash more to pay less closing costs than to say buy your interest rate down to increase a little bit of income per month. It's all math. And and let's be honest, after the first year, you shouldn't be looking at cash on cash. You should be looking at return on equity. Right? right? Not cash on cash. It's great for buying a property, but you know, TikTok, I don't know how it works, but I'll just say everyone on TikTok says cash on cash is everything. I kind of disagree. Um, I mean, let's take your girl for example. She bought a property at 25% down. It's going to great do great cash flow. You guys are going to kill it. But also she was able to take the equity and now she's looking at a second property. So for the deal of one property, she's looking at buying two total properties. Right. That's building wealth. And she doesn't care about rate because it's all about building wealth. Yeah. Yeah. Her cabin, actually, that this is Sonia we're talking about. We have, I have another YouTube video talking with Sonia about like in the middle of her deal. Um, so go watch that. It's about an hour long. She's very wordy. But um, what was I going to say? Her, uh, what's today? Is today Thursday? No, tomorrow her cabin is getting the photography done. Um, We basically did a bird there. This place is going to kill it. So yeah, photos coming soon and it'll be live and ready to book probably like this time next week. Yeah, it depends how long the photography takes, but that's exciting. My only advice for photography, uh, because a guy on um, all the big groups, every time I see his, uh, he always does breakfast and it drives me nuts because he never like pictures of the breakfast food, Oh, like on no, the, like in the tub, like put some bacon in those photos. Like I'm oh. a man. I want to see bacon, like put bacon oh, on the plate, man. something that like, you know, I'm a woman, I, I want bacon. No, it's like everyone wants to put like a bowl of fruit and like a, I don't know, fancy food and like a little fancy cup of uh orange juice like whiskey. dude throw a stack of bacon whiskey. there you go whiskey. whiskey yeah or throw a steak on a grill why does mm-hmm. no one throw steak on the grill for their photos of the grill cooking right no we don't do that the only thing that we stay i guess it's well, all fancy we stuff. did a bottle of champagne for the dolly property uh, okay because everything's pink so we got a pink bottle should have hired a dolly should have hired a dolly impersonator to come by and uh, stage I everything. met one actually in Nashville at the book launch um, for hospitable hosts. Um, and yeah, so we might have to do that at some point. I was hoping to get in there 
during my week of vacation in the Smokies with my family, get in there and make some content. And it was booked solid. I couldn't even, the turn was so tight. I'm like, mm. But as other people say they're down, why is yours up? That one, the Dolly, oh, it has gone gangbusters on TikTok. I yeah, have like it's a few cool. videos of it that have over a half a million views and 15, 16,000 comment. Like it's insane. That one direct books all the time. And it's great. It's unique, right? Like, you know, Nashville has a few Dolly condos I've seen, but Florida is all about Disney. Uh, I think people in the Smokies, the reason some people complain is they just don't want to spend the time, the money or take however long like you took off and make it separate itself. And right. doing a doing a Dolly theme in in the Smokies is genius. Yeah, right. Everyone knows Dolly here. If you don't, I don't know why you come here. So, and you catered to it. <laughs> Perfect. I have another house in that same area, like just a few doors down. You can actually see each other. I can see the houses in the ring cameras that go, you know, surveil the driveway. And I'm like, hmm, what should I do? That one's bigger though. It's like a three bed, three bath. So, ouch on the budget there, but yeah. But who could you do besides Dolly? Who's a big I know. that one has a hot tub, but it is a house. It's not a cabin. It's a house. But um, if you make the inside nice and make people want to come because the uniqueness, yeah. Just don't do Taylor Swift. Just don't do Taylor Swift. That's my no, only thing. That's a no. Well, it's been great talking to you today. What should we cover? Anything else or? Uh, the only thing I would say is. Guys, don't be scared to buy, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of negativity out there. Negativity sells. But at the end of the day, if you look at the history of the wealthy people, uh, there's a weird stat that when I, I think it was Barry Habib again, said that um, to be in the top percent of wealth, two out of three people or two thirds of the wealthiest people all got wealth through real estate. If you don't play in the game, you don't have a chance to be wealthy. So it's worth playing the game, but it's worth playing the game with the right team, the right realtor, the right property manager, the right everything. With that, you can build wealth in any type of market. Mic drop on that. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, I would say if anybody wants to get a hold of Big Nate with the lender, reach out to me and I will shoot his contact to you. Um, I'll be sending this YouTube link out in my email to all my buyers and yeah, let's get it going. Let's see what sort of deals we can get into. What are we? We're halfway through the year. So we've got, you know, you Scary. have a goal to get a property this year. Your, your clock is ticking. So Yeah, I had a goal to get, get another done. one. And I was under a handshake deal last week. I was eating tamales. I went to get tamales uh, with the investor meetup. And when I left that investor meetup, the guy had another realtor come in and offer more than me. Now to come find out that deal uh -oh. fell through. Oh, so now I'm like, oh, I should go back to that guy and offer less now. And so, less, 10%. Yes, at least. <laughs> so as always, it's awesome to speak with you. You um, do. Show me the money. It's good times. Yes, for sure. Thank <laughs> you. No problem. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.